Hello and welcome to the Candid Cash Flow Podcast, episode 41. I'm your host, Ava Fails. <laughs> Flowers, what is going on? I hope this finds everyone's cash flowing. Next week's show will be very special. It will be the first ever guest appearance on the Candid Cash Flow podcast. You're not going to want to miss it, so subscribe in your favorite listening app at heyoavacom slash Candid Cash Flow. So, how popular are podcasts? Well, let, let's run through a few numbers here. of the U.S. population have listened to a podcast. 80% of those listeners listen to all or most of an episode. Listeners are tuning in to seven shows per week on average. In 2018, there are 6 million more listeners than in 2017. 49% of podcast listening is done at home compared to 23% while in the car. 69% are listening via a mobile device. These stats don't touch YouTube, but that's a whole other show altogether. What it really comes down to is what fits your personality, budget, and business model the best. Obviously, I chose podcasts. While I have a YouTube channel, I just find video production laborious and the equipment is crazy expensive. Podcasts were the path of least resistance for me while remaining viable in the growing tech world. Are you ready for the quick and dirty podcast tutorial that will show you how to become a podcaster free? Then stay tuned. Check out Blueberry, home of the largest podcast directory in the world. Blueberry has solutions for podcasters ranging from hosting to stats to their awesome PowerPress plugin for WordPress. Find out more at heyoava.com slash blueberry. So what kind of equipment is needed to start a podcast? You can make this as simple or as complicated as you want. If you've been following me for any length of time, then you know I like to keep things stupid simple. This quick and dirty podcast tutorial will be no different. Action steps will be in the show notes. When I'm considering a new project and someone is giving me their laundry list of equipment, I'm often skeptical. In my experience, there's always a way to accomplish results without breaking the bank. If your content is good enough, people are going to want to consume it regardless of if you have the most expensive camera, best microphone, nicest editing software, whatever. Don't ever give up on an idea because you can't afford all of the fancy accoutrements some hack on the internet said you must have. If you have a decent smartphone, you probably have what you need to get started. The idea of starting a podcast for free assumes that you have some basic equipment that most people possess on average, such as a computer with an internet connection, a smartphone, and a quiet place to record. In addition to this, you may want to consider a dedicated and higher-end microphone at the very least. However, if you can't invest right now, your smartphone's mic will suffice. There is no extra equipment needed to start a podcast. I use a very cheap condenser mic. My setup is no longer available on Amazon, but you can find something similar for under 30 bucks at heyoava.com slash microphone. What about software and services you'll need for podcasting? The good news is you can get set up to begin publishing your podcast for absolutely free with this quick and dirty podcast tutorial. You will need a host for your audio files. Even if you have your own website, you can't really host your own audio because it will eat up your file space and bandwidth. Fortunately, Anchor.fm is a very viable and free option for hosting your audio. I didn't know about Anchor when I started my show back in December of 2017, or I probably would have gone with this free option. If you're just curious, I host my audio with Libsyn, and that costs me $15 per month. 
I would suggest choosing the host right for you and staying with that host for the long haul. Moving everything after you're established will be incredibly difficult. Anchor.fm has a lot of great tools for recording and presenting an awesome podcast. They also recently released a method to monetize your podcast by having your audience pay for subscriptions. I'm unsure how well that model would work for someone like me who started from scratch with no audience. The Candid Cash Flow podcast has actually generated very little revenue from affiliate offers. I suggest that you research to find what monetization methods would fit best with the goals you have for your show. In addition to your audio host, you need a way to edit your files. Depending upon your operating system and experience, you may already have a free option available for this task. But if you don't, I highly recommend Audacity. Audacity is an open source audio recorder and editor and it's available completely free. I record my podcast in Audacity and edit it on my desktop computer. I applied two simple effects, the noise reduction and compressor. Grab the show notes at heyoava.com slash episode 41 and I'll include a link to a video of me editing my podcast. It is certainly not a requirement to provide show notes for your audience, but I strongly suggest that you do so. When your show begins to gain traction, your audience will come looking for you on social media and around the web to see what else you have to offer. I greatly enjoy preparing the show notes for each episode for my listeners. I include bonus content whenever possible, which can include ebooks, checklists, videos, and just whatever I think will help y'all out. My show notes are simple. The content is an exact copy paste for each episode's corresponding blog post. The notes are in PDF format for easy readability and portability. Every mobile device can open PDFs. I use Google Docs to create the the initial show note document. I then download the document as a PDF and upload it to my Google Drive. Then I take the shareable link, create a user-friendly link, and share that with you all several times throughout each episode. You could essentially upload your show to Anchor, use this method for your show notes, and forego any need for a website at all free. It just depends on how you want to be presented. I almost forgot, you're probably going to want some kind of theme music and you need a couple graphics. The song I use is by an artist named 43 and I found it via YouTube. The piece was labeled as royalty free as long as I link back to the artist. I covered how to find royalty-free music in this manner just recently in episode 39 of the Candid Cash Flow podcast, so be sure to check that out. I'll include a link to the show notes for that episode in this week's show notes. You need a logo for your podcast. This can be as simple or as detailed as you like. I threw my logo together in Canva, which is a free drag and drop graphic design platform I've talked about many times. You need two graphics, a square logo, maximum 3000 by 3000 pixels, minimum 1400 by 1400 pixels. And then you need a 300 by 300 pixel resized copy of the same image. Make sure you create your images to resize correctly and ensure any text is easily readable at both sizes. When you create your Anchor.fm account, you'll be asked for your artwork. Having these prepared ahead of time will save you time and also set you up to distribute your podcast to additional platforms later on. That's really it to start. You need something to record on, some editing software, and an audio host, and then boom goes the dynamite. So, let's plan for episode one. Are you ready to commit? When I was researching how to start the Candid Cash Flow podcast, I went by Pat Flynn's tutorial. I'll include a link to that in the show notes as well. The piece of advice that Pat gives is to commit to podcasting. Commit to a set time frame and just go. I think he suggested six months, so that was my initial commitment. At this point, you may want to decide where your podcast will call home on the web. 
for me, it's on my website. You hear me mention 10 times every episode. I decided just to tack it onto my existing website because I wasn't sure it would be something I do long term. So I didn't get a dedicated domain name. You may choose to purchase a domain and build a website around your show. If you want to keep with our theme of things being free, you can choose a free website option like Wix, WordPress.com, or even Blogspot. Believe me, I understand what it's like to be doing big things online with little to no money, so go with whatever you can afford. However, I always recommend buying your own domain and hosting, then install WordPress. It's professional and you can customize it exponentially. Not to mention websites are cheap. Contact me at heyoava.com slash contact dash Ava if you want to know more. It's just a good idea to have a place where your show lives online besides your audio host. That way you have a place to showcase your work and link to your show notes for your audience. Once you've got all that figured out, what will the format of your show be like? Will you host guests? Will you work from a script? I actually write my blog post first so I don't um my audience to death. This also means I don't have to transcribe my show later or pay someone else to do it for me. All these things should be taken into consideration right from the beginning. The next thing you want to decide is your schedule. What day of the week will you release new episodes? How often will you release them? For example, just like I say at the end of every show, I release a new episode each Wednesday. This way, my audience knows exactly when to expect new content from me. You'll find this type of structure is a strategy that works not only for podcasts, but video and blog posts as well. People like to know when you do what you do for some reason. Happy, happy, joy, joy recording day is finally here. Nothing special necessarily needs to happen other than being ready. For me, recording day means having my blog post done, dodging the times the neighbor lets her three Dobermans outside, not recording before I'm fully awake and hoping the cat doesn't decide it's mealtime on her deli cat five feet from my mic. Recording day means you're fully prepared to present your full episode. I usually record and edit together, and I record my show in five segments. Intro, overview, sponsor, body, and conclusion. I edit each one as I record them. Then once I'm done, I edit the segments together with my theme music. I upload that MP3 to Libsyn, and boom, a new episode is released. Once you have a few episodes under your belt, it's time to think about distribution. The number one place you want your show to be as a podcaster is iTunes or formerly Apple Podcasts. iTunes is kind of the unofficial founder of all things podcasts. The word podcast actually comes from their iPod product. Anchor FM distributes to iTunes. In fact, they have one-click distribution to all of the following. Apple Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. I would venture to say this is actually better than Libsyn's distribution, which I pay $15 a month for, and this is completely free. I had to manually add my podcast to several of these in this list. What I'm about to share with you, I could easily charge for. I've put together a report called Podcast Everywhere that shows you how to get your podcast on all of the major and minor platforms, including ones that aren't in Anchor's distribution list. There will be a link to that report in the show notes. Once you have your show feeding out to all the cool places online, you're good to go. From that point on, you just have to release your episodes. Podcasting has been a fun and rewarding experience for me. Even though my show hasn't earned me tons of revenue and really kind of operates in the red because I pay for my audio hosting, it has rewarded me in other ways. The most notable being that it has forced me to create content for my blog on a consistent basis. 
I've had many blogs over the years, but I've never had a consistent content creation schedule for any of them until now. I've learned a lot of things and it's allowed me to share my knowledge with the masses. A new era is dawning for the Candid Cash Flow podcast. Remember I told you that I made an initial commitment of six months to the project. I've met and exceeded that time frame and mid-December will celebrate the one year mark for the show and it's been a great ride. I can't recommend the experience enough. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, absolutely do it. I was so surprised by how fun it is. Absolutely do not miss next week's episode when I present our first guest. You'll meet someone you're familiar with if you listen regularly to the Candid Cash Flow podcast, so subscribe in your favorite listening app by visiting heyyoava.com slash candidcashflow. Don't forget to grab a copy of the show notes. They are absolutely jam-packed with bonus material this week, some of which I did not even mention, so get those at heyyoava.com slash episode 41. If you have feedback or you'd like to be a guest on the show, contact me at heyyoava.com slash sound off. Remember, I release a new episode each Wednesday. Until next time, turning your passion into cash flow.